Thank you. Good evening. I'm going to call the Board of Selectmen's meeting for April 24th, 2023 to order. Would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Public comment announcement. I feel like I'm channeling my inner Cindy Williams or my inner Carolyn Carey here. Um, Bernadette Waystack, the Harwich Cultural Council, and I wanted to come, and I'll be as brief as I can, but there is a whole lot going on arts and culture-wise coming up. Um, starting with this Wednesday morning, um, there's going to be a cultural district education forum from 10 to 12 and the auditorium at the 204. So any questions anyone has, anything they'd like to pursue or know more about the newly designated cultural districts, um, you can come and bring your questions and your comments then. Um, and then we're going into Art Week. Officially, it would be uh, Sunday to Sunday, April 30th to May 7th. Um, there's a couple of prelude events that are coming up on Saturday 20, the 29th in the morning. Uh, a lot of people in the creative community are going to partner with the people from the Harwich Conservation Trust for the Tour de Trash. And then in the afternoon, we have the reception and opening of Kaleidoscope, the Harwich Community Art Show at the 204 up in the library meeting room. The reception is 3 to 6, and this is just so that the public hears in one of another many ways so that the whole community knows about it. I know that Mr. Galvin's been great about putting some things in the paper. Um, there's going to be an interview on Channel 18 um, on Wednesday, but this is a great place to get it out to people, so I appreciate your time tonight. Um, and then there's a whole week's worth of things going on. Um, but I would be remiss if one I didn't mention specifically. Um, at the 204 during the week of Art Week and then permanently, there's going to be a Cape Verdean history display and that's an important thing. I've only lived here less than 40 years, but I know how important it is that we're finally bringing the culture of our Cape Verdean community home. Um, many, many other things going on all week. Um, th it'll all kind of run up to the big second weekend where we will have the official ri ribbon cutting ceremony for the two cultural districts. Um, and everyone is formally invited to come. Um, it's at 11 o'clock at Brooks Park in the morning of May 5th for the Harwich Center Cultural District, and then at 1 p.m. at the Harwich Chamber Office for the Harwich Port Cultural District. Spring Marketplace and Open Studios will be happening on May 6th at the 204 starting 10 to 4. There'll be a number of uh, people there with studios open and demonstrations and things going on. There'll be spring uh, market vendors, hopefully outside if the weather cooperates, and if not, they'll be inside. And then it all culminates on Sunday, May 7th, with the Family Fun Day. Um, the vendors will be there again from four, uh, 10 to 4, and starting at noon, there'll be just a plethora of things happening. Um, face painting, gaming, laser tag, mad science, ma magicians, just more than we could tell you and more than I can give you time with tonight. But please, just everybody out there, know that you're uh, cordially invited, that there's, it's all free, and this is all happening, you know, to celebrate Harwich and the arts community in Harwich and to give back to the community. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Bernadette. Good evening, Cindy Williams, <coughs> Executive Director of the Harwich Chamber. I'm in disguise tonight. Um, I actually was unloading the new magazine, which is in front of all of you, um, and it is now here um, in time for town meeting as well as the season. Um, it will be located at the Community Center, Town Hall, 204 Sisson, and of course the Chamber, as well as throughout the Cape and a variety of new and exciting locations in Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. Um, and I will also, once again, um, our town moderator is gracious and lets me stand outside of town meeting and hand them out to everyone going in. So excited. Um, it is larger than ever and uh, really highlights um, all of Harwich. A um, couple of quick things. Uh, tomorrow's review, the uh, town warrant dinner has been canceled at 400 East. Just want to make sure everyone is aware of that. 
Um, this Thursday, we're doing a special event. Um, meet the new owner and chef of Red River Barbecue, 5 to 7. I am asking for RSVPs by 3 o'clock tomorrow. Um, I accidentally put out the wrong phone number on the flyer today, but, you know, I was excited about the magazine. So um, the did a, you know, sorry post on Facebook, but still, um, in case anyone wants to know, the correct phone number to call an RSVP is 508-430-1165 or, of course, my email. And speaking of barbecue, the new um, event we are doing June 10th, the barbecue competition, is selling out like crazy. So please get your tickets because it will sell out and we are not selling tickets at the event this year just because we don't want to stress the competitors out so june 10th barbecue competition first of its kind here in harwich at the community center thank you thank you cindy hi brianna powell housing advocate i have two announcements or updates tonight um, the first one is cape cod commission who's here tonight is working on a regional housing strategy strategy for the whole Cape and has scheduled the first meeting of the Lower Cape Sub-Regional Stakeholder Working Group <coughs> to be held this Wednesday, April 26th at 1 p.m. at the Community Center in Harwich. Um, this will be in Activity Room 3. Both Joe Powers and I will be attending this meeting and Joe announced this meeting at the Affordable Housing Trust meeting earlier today. <coughs> and the second one is, you guys all have flyers at your seats, but I'm happy to announce that the Housing Office will be hosting a home buyer seminar to educate and empower folks that are interested in purchasing a home and may have questions surrounding how to get started or what the process looks like. The two guest speakers include a realtor and a mortgage officer that have extensive experience in their fields. The seminar will be held virtually through teams to ensure that folks with all different schedule restrictions can attend. Um, and this will be Thursday, June 1st at 6 p.m. Thank you, Brianna. I certainly hope there's no Inna Carolyn and Bernadette. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants that. Uh, Carolyn Carey, Community Center Director. Very quickly, we are doing some events. Uh, May 1st, you can stop by the Community Center and get your free jump rope and tally sheet for anyone. It's not just for kids. Um, and you keep track of how much you jump rope throughout the month and then turn them in on May 24th, 25th, or tw 26th, and there'll be a big prize for all those of you who participate, and you get to keep the jump rope too. <laughs> on May 16th, uh, from 6 to 8 p.m., is Beach Blanket Bingo. It is for adults. It is backed by popular demand, so it's free, and pizza will be served, but you do need to register. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Mary? Um, the um, committee I'd like to highlight this week is the uh, Capital Outlay Committee. There are currently two openings on that committee, and uh, it's vitally important. That's who really analyzes the capital needs submitted by all of the town departments and determines which are to be funded. So again, I've said this before, rather than stay home and complain about the numbers, volunteer, get involved in the committee, and help vet the numbers. Uh, as always, the, uh, the forms are available on the website, and any of the other committees are available as well. Thank you, Mary. Joe? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening to you and everyone here. Um, the town's Memorial Day ceremony will be <coughs> held at Brooks Park this year. <coughs> Uh, it'll be held actually on Memorial Day, Monday, May 29th, 2023 at 9.30. Again, it'll be at the Brooks Park uh, Gazebo and Harwich Center. Um, and of course, it's always a great tribute to our, our veterans and, and those who made the ultimate sacrifice. So we'll be reminding that throughout the month of May. Thank you, Joe. Anyone else? All right, public presentations and public hearings. We'll start with Christy Senatori from the Cape Cod Commission. Thank you very much, and thanks for the opportunity to be here. Um, I am uh, extremely pleased to be here tonight just to share some updates from the Cape Cod Commission. I am joined also by Sarah Colvin. She's our communications manager. 
So any follow-up needed after this, we'd be happy to do so. And I also wanted to recognize and thank Jackie Edston. She's the current um, member for the town of Harwich on the Cape Cod Commission. Um, being a member of the Cape Cod Commission is a lot of work and takes a lot of dedication, so we've been um, really thankful to have Jackie as a member for quite some time. And I also wanted to thank and recognize Elizabeth Harder, who's the delegate from um, the town of Harwich on the Assembly of Delegates for Barnesville County, and thank her also for her support of the work that we've been doing. So um, from time to time, I visit the 15 towns and um, visit the 14 select boards and the Barnesville Town Council to provide some updates on some of the work that we're doing and to just keep the lines of communication open so that um, we can make sure that we're collaborating with each of the towns. And if you receive our newsletter, you've likely seen some of the information that I've sent out, but we um, have uh, issued a, a year in review for 2022, and so I've got um, that outlined here for you. Certainly it's not a comprehensive look at everything that we did last year, but it does provide some of the highlights of some of our priority projects. Um, but just three things that I wanted to highlight tonight so that I don't take up too much of your time. I know you have quite a lengthy agenda, but I wanted to talk a little bit about water quality, coastal resiliency and climate change, and then some of the work that we're doing on housing, which you've already heard a little bit about tonight from Brianna. But in terms of water quality, most of our focus, most of our work as of late has been looking at our coastal water quality efforts um, around our marine estuaries and embayments. We've seen some significant progress in the 15 communities. <coughs> um, communities are making prog progress not only to address the nitrogen impairments, but also to take advantage of available funding and financing opportunities. Um, and as you know, the commission provides administrative and technical support to the Cape and Islands Water Protection Fund Management Board. Um, and I wanna thank certainly select board member Don Howell for his very active <coughs> participation on that board. Um, and, and to date, that fund has been able to do, uh, distribute nearly $100 million in grants um, to support wastewater projects across the Cape, nearly 28 million just last year alone. Um, so certainly we're, we're very pleased to see Harwich be able to take advantage of some of those funding opportunities with about 5.5 million in, in subsidies to date. And I understand there are two projects on this year's intended use plan, which we hope to have that board um, get together to vote uh, in the very soon time frame. Um, along those same lines of water quality, much of our focus has been around coastal water quality, but we wanted to also make sure we were um, providing some emphasis to our freshwater quality, uh, our freshwater ponds and lakes. So this year we began with an update to our pond and lakes atlas for the region, um, really setting an important baseline for data and information on our freshwater bodies. The Cape has about 890 freshwater ponds and lakes across the region, but less than 10% of those are actually monitored. Um, so this is really a limited um, available data set, so we really need to focus on getting more information to gather a clear understanding of pond health across the region. We need that consistent data collection efforts to really understand what some of the impairments are, the impacts are, so that we can then put together strategies that can really um, have more of a significant impact on our degradation that we're seeing in our freshwater ponds. So with the Freshwater Initiative, um, we did receive some funding through Brunswick County to initiate this project. We'll be working and have already started working with all 15 towns. Our staff has met with your staff, um, and we've but we'll be getting shortly a stakeholder outreach process. Um, we have a PONS network, we've hired a limnologist, we've hired multiple consultants to work with us to develop a framework really to address the impairments that we're seeing in our freshwater bodies. Um, so that's a lot of the work that we've been doing on water quality. It's also very closely tied, though, to coastal, um, uh, coastal resiliency and climate change. So um, as you may know, we completed last year for the first time ever a climate action plan for Cape Cod. And so much of our focus now is really on implementing the recommendations within that climate action plan. Um, and um, as of this year, we will be working with all 15 towns on a low-lying roads project. And so we're pleased um, that, that the town of Harwich is engaged. You have a, an upcoming public meeting on uh, May 24th, a workshop, really to have a discussion around some of those vulnerable infrastructure um, roadways and other opportunities to um, prioritize some of those um, infrastructure improvements so that we could potentially identify other funding sources to, to address some of our coastal vulnerabilities. Um, as it relates to climate change more specifically, we've been working collaboratively with the towns um, and with many of our stakeholders to develop uh, model bylaws to address not only large-scale solar, electric, electric vehicle charging infrastructure, 
as well as looking at um, a comprehensive, comprehensive set of floodplain design guidelines. So this is something that we've been working on um, and we anticipate having out for um, the towns within the next uh, few months or so. So that's something that we've prioritized and are moving forward with addressing um, in, climate change, in our climate change world. And so shifting, I know I'm going through these quickly, but shifting quickly to housing, um, as you may know, and I know it was already referenced tonight, we are working on a regional housing strategy for Cape Cod to address housing supply, affordability, and availability. Uh, we want to identify areas that are appropriate for housing development and probably even more importantly, redevelopment by identifying policies and creating strategies that are appropriate to the Cape. The median sales price for a single family home was around $690,000 Cape-wide at the end of last year. The estimated annual household income needed to affordably purchase that median sales price single family home is around $210,000. That's significantly higher than the Cape median income of $82,000. So this combined with the lack of available homes on the market for sale, the lack of diversity in the market, 82% um, of the homes on the Cape are single family homes. We have a lack of diversity of other types of housing. In addition to the fact that about 37% of our housing stock are seasonal homes, they're second homes, really just means that affordable and attainable housing is, is only getting further out of reach. Um, so we are pleased to be developing a regional housing strategy for Cape Cod. Um, we're developing baseline data and information now. And so what I've handed out also is a, a profile for the town of Harwich um, that identifies a lot of demographic and key economic information, the status of housing development in each of the towns and specifically in Harwich. We've developed th these for all 15 towns as well as a comprehensive baseline um, data set for the entirety of Barnesville County. <coughs> We're also working with a consultant to develop um, an economic analysis um, and uh, we'll, be f we'll be sharing some of those results within the, uh, the coming months. Also, um, like our freshwater initiative, much of our work will be with the stakeholders. And so the first step in that process really was to meet with the 15 towns. And so our staff met with the staff in each of the 15 towns um, to really understand where some of the challenges are as it relates to housing development, understand where the opportunities are, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and how um, we can put a regional plan together that's effective, not only for the Cape as a whole, but for the 15 communities um, individually as well. So we'll be considering different local and regional strategies that we can potentially implement across the Cape. As was mentioned, our first um, series of stakeholder meetings will be beginning this week. Uh, we have a steering committee. We also have a committee based on funding and financing, really trying to identify opportunities to bring additional resources to the Cape um, to identify areas where it's appropriate for housing development. So that is um, a very high level and, and brief overview of some of our priority projects from 2022 and going into 2023, some things that we're <coughs> working on. I know um, some of you were able to attend our One Cape Summit last year. Um, we were pleased to be back in person for the first time in a few years. We'll be holding our One Cape Summit again this year, so we'll be issuing a save the date hopefully within the coming week or so and likely to be back in Harwich um, for that event. So we look forward to welcoming um, you all to that event. So. I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity to be here to provide some um, remarks, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Christy. Sure. Julie, any questions or comments? Oh, the statistics are so depressing. Um, but <clears throat> I appreciate what the commission has done to extend two towns over the last few years in terms of trying to get us on board with the ADUs and such, and we're going to town meeting, trying to simplify that process. As you point out, it's allowed, but we're trying to simplify it even further. Um, you know, at the One Cape Summit, we had some great information from the gentleman. I think he was from Colorado, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, as you're looking into this regional impact, which I, I think the regional approach to the housing is going to be key because it's not one specific area. We're all heartened on housing, whatever we can do to combine efforts. Did you do you think that any of that information is going to end up being beneficial in trying in trying to roll out this regional um, sort of approach? Yeah, it's a great question, and um, we absolutely think so. And in fact, um, the gentleman we had at our One Cape Summit last year from um, from Vail, Colorado, is actually one of our advisors. So he's helping right. us kind of devise some strategies um, and identify opportunities. Um, some of our towns have already looked more specifically, including Provincetown, at some of the programs that have worked and um, potentially modeling um, uh, opportunities in those towns as well. So we're really trying to look 
broadly at strategies across not only Massachusetts, but even going further across the country, what's worked in other areas that are um, similar to ours, that have similar challenges, um, and try to identify those strategies that we can implement here. So it's a great suggestion, and um, certainly I think that's one that's very appropriate. No, that's great to hear. Um, and then just a couple other, you, you mentioned about the, the um, emphasis on looking at our ponds and trying to improve that water quality. We in town have been looking at our ponds as well, specifically Dan Pelotero, water superintendent, um, looking at funding possibly for sewering a s certain area of town in terms of improving that. Well, what do you think's uh, available in terms of funding for, for that kind of thing? Maybe it's too soon to ask that question, but I'm just wondering if there are going to be other resources that will save us some money. So that is also another good question. Um, part of the regional <coughs> freshwater initiative that we're putting together is to devise those strategies so that then we can understand what might work here, what might be appropriate in our region, and then we can take those strategies and say we have a plan um, and, I, and really advocate for additional resources to be brought into the community. So we're collaborating with um, some of our state agencies uh, that may be able to help at least provide a pathway to some of those additional resources. So they're part of our um, part of our teams, and we're we're trying to make sure that they're incorporated um, along the um, along the way as um, not only stakeholders but really as um, key key players as we devise devise this regional strategy. Okay. So as you're looking at those, you're going to try to figure out the best approach, and then sort of give the town whatever you know what like scenario one, two, or three, similar to what I was just reading about the, the low lying roads. Um, in other words, you'll come up with some type of design and you'll say these are your options and then we have to look for funding. Well, I think what we need to do is make sure that some of these decisions can still stay local. So we want to make sure that we're putting together kind of a matrix of options of strategies that could work mm -hmm. um, and then identify what, sh what each individual town might be wanting and to um, potentially adopt in some of these communities. Okay, great. And then you just mentioned that on that floodplain design, you're going to be rolling that out in the next few months? Yes, we're working through some um, drafts at the moment, so I do anticipate those should be ready soon. Great, great. Thank you very much. It's great information for us. Great. Thank you, Julie. Mary? Um, does the commission have a position on the state now taking the, uh, the requirement for nitrogen and reducing the amount of time that we have to complete it in? As a group, when we were in Boston at the, um, what's that, M right. MMA, uh, we lobbied pretty hard with the um, um, the, the second lieutenant, lieutenant governor. governor. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hearing now that, and then there was supposed to be a committee pulled together to work on that, but I'm hearing now that no, it is what it is. What What's the commission's uh, position on that? So there are two sets of regulations. It's going to be watershed <laughs> permit regulations and then the changes to Title V. And um, the commission did send a comment letter identifying um, some opportunities where we thought there could be improvement in the language that was proposed. Um, overall, we were expecting those watershed permit regulations, honestly, for quite some time, for a few years since we developed the 208 plan. So um, we were pleased to see those watershed permit regulations roll out, and um, really those should be supporting a lot of the watershed planning that's going on in the towns, and so we're, we're pleased to see that. Um, there's probably some space for some improvement in some of the language around time frame on the Title V pieces of it, but we're really hoping that focus can be on the watershed permitting since that's where really we're going to see the greatest impact on continued um, management for nitrogen in, in our marine estuaries and embayments. Thank you, Mary. Don. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We even on here? Jamie, is this on? <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi, Christy. A uh, couple of things. Just a little bit further to what Mary was saying, uh, because the the DEP regulations were you know, just simply put, were, uh, based on the numbers they were providing for Harwich, were roughly tripling the number of residences that we're going to have to go to a sewer of some sort and compressing the time frame by half. So if we were looking at $350 million over 40 years, essentially we'd be looking at like <coughs> $1.2 billion over 20 years. Uh, so it, it, Mary's point is well taken. It's a daunting problem, and that's just Harwich. I mean, I don't think there's enough money in the state to be able to pull this off if they actually hold everybody to that time frame in those quantities. Yeah, I mean, I haven't heard that 
the time frame for which they intend to make a decision and, and implement or not implement those changes to Title V regulations. We did express some concerns, um, and our staff has met with staff at DEP to, um, to share our concerns with some of those regulations, and so hopefully they'll make some of those changes that I think have been suggested by many. Okay, then two quick things, uh, kind of quick. <coughs> the um, relative, and you and I have had this discussion, Aaron and I have this discussion, that newspaper article that appeared in Provincetown newspaper uh, talking about how the uh, Clean Waters Trust Fund had kind of dried up uh, misses a point. And I just like, since you're here, to be able to say this to everybody, it did probably uh, ebb uh, lower in terms of uh, what our on hand cash balance was, but that doesn't mean that nobody's going to come to the Cape anymore and visit anymore. Uh, it, it, there will be more uh, funds that are going to be uh, coming into that. And it's kind of difficult to assess what that, what that level will be because we had one COVID year and then one post-COVID year. So I'd like some assurance for everybody that we're, you're not going out of the business of uh, you know, funding such projects. Sure. So certainly there has been a lot of discussion around the balance of in, in the Water Protection Fund. And um, what we're seeing when I talked about significant progress of our communities putting plans together, moving those forward, getting those on the intended use plan, that's all really positive. That's, that's significant improvement, but we're seeing drastic increases in those prices. We're seeing drastic increases in the number of projects that are on the intended use plan, which is all positive. But at the same time, um, we also need to keep in mind that to, to maintain that, that subsidy percentage that was identified um, by the management board a few years ago, um, that does put the fund at a little bit of um, uh, a challenge. And so certainly, we're um, having those conversations with the executive committee, with the management board, and we'll make um, very informed decisions. We have uh, a financial consultant that's been working with us, so um, we're pleased to see progress. We're pleased to see the communities taking action, putting watershed plans together, and, and moving their plans forward to really address the nitrogen issues that we're seeing. So um, we're, you know, I think there were, there were a lot of things in that, in that article um, that were covered and not, not necessarily all um, pertaining to the Water Protection Fund either. So, um, but certainly we're, we're making sure that every effort is made to um, continue to fund the projects at the subsidy levels that um, were initially intended, but being mindful that there are more projects and there are more increased costs. And so, um, you know, certainly that's, that's something that we'll continue to have those conversations with the management board is very well aware. And just one more thing, rolling into housing, and these folks will know it, but just as full disclosure, I'm also President of HESH, uh, Harwood Jack Medical Council for Housing. Um, there's basically two types of rentals on Cape Cod that address uh, affordable housing. There's the ones that are adjunct to 40B uh, projects that are commercial and they've got a time frame. And, uh, and there's HESH, HACK, uh, Community Development Partnership. Um, uh, and you don't have an answer to this, I'm sure you don't, but I just want to make you aware of this. The, um, we started having uh, real problems because, uh, especially the voucher uh, uh, folks, uh, uh, what they pay is calculated as a total of both what the rent capacity is and the utilities. When the utilities busted out, I got to point out to you that the same thing's happening to the housing providers, it's happening in the sewering. Is it, uh, prices for a lot of things have just gone through the roof. Uh, you know, boilers, up, uh, upkeep, and everything. Uh, and to the extent that the state has, A, virtually no subsidies to those tenants for the utilities part, uh, when the utilities shoot up, the capacity for any of the providers to actually try to keep pace for any of the rentals goes down because it's the total that they are paying for their monthly you know, rent and mm -hmm. utilities. Uh, somebody's got to give some consideration to subsidizing that at the state level because that's not sustainable. I mean, you can't lose money on every unit and make it up on volume. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more with you. And where we're pleased to see the regional housing strategy hopefully have an impact is really identifying where some of those issues are so that we can then say we've got this plan, we've got these series of recommendations that's been vetted by a lot of different people across this region. This is where we need the additional resources and we need others to be able to advocate for some of those changes. So whether it's HAC or some of the other advocacy organizations, we can um, have a plan that's been kind of endorsed by all 15 towns, at least some consensus around changes that need to be made. The rental market here on the Cape is 
extremely challenged. Um, I talked about those housing numbers and in terms of ownership, I didn't get into the rental market. I mean, there's so many more challenges with the rental market. I probably don't need to tell any of you um, what those are, but they need, to be, they need to be addressed. And that's where if we have a regional housing strategy that starts to really get at some of those um, major issues that we can then um, advocate for some changes that we need down here. Thank you, thanks. Thank you, Don. Larry. Thank you, Christy. Uh, just a couple, uh, you have a big bully pulpit being the uh, Cape Town Commission. I hope you can help convince people that open space and housing are not competing goals. Because we keep talking about that. You know, we have more dense and where it's required in open space. And they still, when I talk to people, they always, oh, no, you can't do that. It's going to destroy the, uh, the Cape if we quit. So keep up the, uh, whenever you have a chance to talk in the public, I, I think that should be one of your big fallback positions. Great. On freshwater ponds, uh, I did like your comment about the limnologists that you've hired. Because mm -hmm. I find you've been in Harwich where there's a tendency to treat pond A to the same as pond B, the same as, and we know they're, they're different. Without a study, some ponds, sewering helps. In fact, others may not be the solution. You have enough phosphorus in the bottom that it builds up. And until we have that study, it's hard to jump into that bandwagon. So my plea in that case would be use your resources, help us with a scientific evaluation before we spend money. Because we're not, we're, you know, we, we need that help. Um, wastewater, uh, yeah, that's a sore point with us. <laughs> <laughs> I know. As, as you know, uh, I've been involved with the Pleasant Bay Steering Committee for a long time. And with the uh, uh, putting together the uh, plan for that, watershed permitting plan, uh, we're very proud of that and always felt, as you uh, inferred, that that was going to be the bottle for the rest of the Cape of towns working together to, uh, but we uh, took, boy, help me, I don't uh, remember of getting the, we probably worked on that plan for eight, nine, Too late. ten years. Mm -hmm. Before we uh, got now, we're still in drafts. We're going through a, uh, a review, and it's on a five-year. And, and this uh, plan that the DEP is pushing on us to do that within uh, five years, and do that not for one watershed, but, but for all the watersheds. Uh, I was uh, a little disappointed you hadn't, the commission, not you personally, but the commission hasn't been pushing back on that. And, uh, and saying, come on. You know, we're, we're spending a lot of money, we're moving forward, but there's only so many resources and planners and stuff we could do that. And I, I'm with Mary, I haven't seen any more than, I'm, I don't think the final's out yet, uh, regulation, but the last draft I was just reviewing hasn't changed from a uh, five-year plan to, uh, for houses to do it if we were to do a regional plan, which that's a no-brainer, we're not gonna do that. That's a, like an empty threat, I think. But five years for all this developed plans is, uh, I don't think that's possible either, quite frankly. So I'm just hoping that we organize ourselves in, as a county and, and push back on, on uh, some reasonable goal because, you know, we go from 40 years to 20 years, we started out $280 million, it's up to like 350. And then we do that in half the time, uh, I don't know, I'm preaching to the choir, I'm sure, but we're, we're going to town meeting with uh, uh, new, you know, a lot of spending, too. So the waste water is not our only uh, spending item. So uh, thanks for your work, and I appreciate going after funding, but all the funding that your your best case funding is still not going to, we're still going to have a lot of local resources we're going to have to come up with if we stick with that plan. Yeah, so Sorry about that. No, through the chair, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to respond. Um, and certainly I agree, and, and this wastewater planning, it takes a long time, and, and you've taken the lead on a lot of these projects, and, and that's fantastic. And, and Larry, you've been involved in this since, for how long, I don't know, when we were putting the two-way plan together that before, <laughs> before that. So certainly you understand, um, probably more than anyone, some of the challenges around that. And a lot of our comments that went back to DEP on the changes in, to the Title V regulations and the new watershed permit regulations were around making sure the towns have ample time to plan. So um, certainly we understand those concerns, we understand the need for additional funding, and we want to see the towns making progress. So um, we're looking forward to advocating for, for the 15 towns collectively um, because they do need to be working together on these watershed plans. Absolutely. Yeah. Because with housing and all this, that's the regional approach. Mm -hmm. you know, days of us going alone are not, they're gone. 
I have nothing to add. Just thank you. <coughs> great report, great information, and we look forward to more. Great. Thank, thank you, you very much. Coming. I appreciate the opportunity. You can stick around, though, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if you were concerned about this night's agenda, you might want to pop in for town meeting on uh, any of the nights next week. <coughs> Hello. Elizabeth Harder, Harwich Delegate to Barnstable County Assembly of Delegates. Welcome. Christy is our goddess. Um, but Christy, um, <coughs> being running the commission has to be much nicer than I do. Uh, so um, she, the, the commission works really well with the state agencies. Um, so they are quietly working to help us with the mass DEP regulations, but they can't be <coughs> out there publicly pushing it. We can. Um, they changed the name of the organization <coughs> from whatever it was to Simla, Cape and Islands Municipal Leaders Association, sending nasty letters. We ambushed um, the lieutenant governor at the MMA. Um, there are lots of people um, who are pushing back, <laughs> I think, the way you want them to, Larry. It's just, Christy is not in a position, I don't think, to do that because she's got to work with them and do her job, which she does perfectly. Um, and to your other point about housing and water not being competitive, that's exactly what we're trying to get people to understand. One of the things about building housing is recognizing where to build it and recognizing absolutely where it should not be built. Um, and there are um, <coughs> commissions working on it. There's a group now called HPCC, which is Housing to Protect Cape Cod, based on the APCC, the, the uh, too many acronyms, based on the water one. <laughs> Association to Preserve Cape Cod. Yes, Associate <laughs> Cape Cod. And um, and so they're all working together to make sure that water is not impacted by any housing projects. Um, so that is being addressed, and people are trying to get that message <clears throat> out there. Um, and then for Julie, um, the Colorado program that you mentioned, which is called Vale Indeed which I am a huge supporter of it. Um, what they've done in Vail is that town will pay you to make your house year round deed restricted forever. So if you want to sell your house and let's say it would be worth $400,000, but with that restriction, you'd only be able to sell it for 300,000, they'll make up the difference. Um, it's per house. It depends on the amount. Um, it doesn't have to be at time of sale. Um, so if people, instead of taking out a home equity loan, <coughs> they can get the money that way. Um, it seems to be, it's not the only solution to housing because, you know, there is no one solution. But, um, but it is something that proves, that's, uh, proves to be working in Colorado. And to that um, end, Senator Julian Sear has filed a bill that would allow the Cape Towns to put it, I get confused about this, put it, use our home, put it in our home rule petitions, let, let the towns be able to have that rule. I get confused about what towns can do. Um, so anyway, it's, it's Bill SD 1040, and that is to get the towns the ability to implement Vail Indeed. So just to answer those questions. Thank you, Elizabeth. <coughs> oh, Elizabeth, can you just repeat that? SD, S as in Sam, D as in dog? Yeah, it's Senate something. Okay. 1040. 1040. Like, Thank you. Great. Anything else? <coughs> 
I have one, just one observation. Uh, Christy, while you're still here, my observation is that uh, I appreciate the, uh, the manner that you responded to my, my uh, comments about, because my observation is, is that uh, we've lived through <coughs> in Harvard, and I think all the towns, when we first started talking about wastewater, about how we all should be locked up and thrown, and the keys thrown away because it's going to be too expensive, and you know, all the negativity that came out. And, and we've, uh, we've lived through that. And now, it's, and you know, we're, I'm hooked up, by the way, so I, I, uh, I'm, not, I'm not completely unbiased. So I've done that. But we need to be careful how we push back on this, and that's why I'm trying to be a little careful, too, because all of a sudden we're back to the beginning. We've got a lot of people hearing these, this push, and they've become very, uh, real negative again. So somehow we need to change <coughs> that. You know, we need to make some progress, but we also need to be careful about the discussion. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Chris. What's up? Okay, next, uh, public, next is a public hearing for a license transfer of an all-alcohol <coughs> annual on-premise all-alcohol liquor license from WFS Restaurant Group, Inc., DBA Red River Barbecue, to Red River Barbecue, LLC, located at 787 Route 28. Tom, will you read the public hearing notice? Thank you, Mr. Chair. You can uh, sit if you want. Or stand yeah. either or. Notice is hereby given under Chapter 138 of the General Laws as amended that application has been made to the Board to, for a transfer of the annual on-premise all-alcoholic beverages license <laughs> now held by WFS Restaurant Group Incorporated doing business as Red River Barbecue, 787 Route 28, Harwich, Massachusetts, 02646, Christian Schultz, manager, to Red River Barbecue, LLC, 787 Route 28, Harwich, Massachusetts, Jeremiah Reardon, manager, on the following described premises located at 787. Seven Route 28, Harwich, Massachusetts. Building is one floor, two dining rooms, and a waiting area. One dining room has a bar. Liquor will be stored at a, in, a lo in a locked basement storage room. No outdoor liquor service. The Board of Selectmen will hold a hearing on the application on Monday, April 24th, 2023, no earlier than 6 p.m. in the Griffin Room at Harwich Town Hall, 732 Main Street, Harwich, Massachusetts, 02645, signed Board of Selectmen, the local licensing authority, and it was published in the Cape Cod Chronicle on April 6, 2023. Thank you, Don. I'm going to introduce yourselves for the record. Uh, Jeremiah Reardon. Um, my name is Marion Hobbs. I'm a lawyer. Uh, my office is in Brewster, and I represent Jeremiah this evening. Excellent. Welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Want to go over the request or add anything to what Don just announced? Very generally, we've filed an extensive application packet um, with your office and as you've already heard from Mr. Howell we're seeking to transfer a year-round all alcohol liquor license from WFS Restaurant Group Inc. Kristen Schultz manager to Red River Barbecue LLC Jeremiah Reardon manager for the property at 787 Route 28, the Red River Barbecue Restaurant. Um, I think maybe is it the best use of your time um, and our presence this evening to ask if there are questions about the application materials? I will ask that now. Anyone in the public wish to comment on this? Anyone online? Okay, a motion to close. Then we close the public. Thank you. Second. Moved and seconded to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Board deliberation. Don. I'd be prepared to make the motion if everybody. You make the motion, and we'll get into discussion. Sir. Okay. Um, I move that, uh, uh, noting that the police department has no objections to the application for the transfer, I would move that the transfer uh, of the license uh, located at 787 Route 28 be approved as presented. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion, Larry? No, I think the uh, reading of the public notice is probably longer than your hearing's going to be. <laughs> 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 I didn't I write lar it. Largely I covered our <coughs> uh, material, so. I do hope I, uh, my, uh, I lived in North Carolina for a long time, and so okay. uh, my plea is that when you have pulled pork sandwiches, you serve coleslaw on it. That's your only copy right now, pulled pork. Okay. <laughs> coleslaw on it, noted. <laughs> <laughs> Don? 
despite what he said, there is quite a bit of debate about which state has the best barbecue sauce, so I, I wouldn't get booked into that. We might have debate on that from the audience. <laughs> Mary? No <coughs> questions. Uh, happy to support the business. So. Thank, you. Thank you. Julie? Exactly the same feeling. Welcome, and we look forward to it. Thank you. Excited to be here. Welcome to the community. Thank you so much. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, five zero. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we're grateful to Christian Schultz, who I don't think is here, for working with us. And thank you also to your staff, especially Danielle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, can I get a motion on the consent agenda? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move that we vote to approve the Board of Selectmen meeting minutes from April 10th, 2023, to approve the Board of Selectmen meeting minutes from April 18th, 2023, and approve the annual Harwich Police Department reappointments as contained in our packet. Second. Moved and second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye, 5-0. Aye. Aye, Next on a new business, A, um, <laughs> Vote to appoint a member of the Board of Selectmen as Harwich representative to the Cape Cod Commission for three-year term. This was a mistake on my part. This really should be a reappointment. The information that I had when I created the agenda item, um, more read that it was a Selectman appointee, not a uh, person in the public. I did contact Jacqueline Esten as soon as I read the packet. Uh, she is with us tonight. She can speak if she'd like to or not, but I offered her my apologies for the mistake. Um, and I will put this back on on May 8th for a reappointment. Um, unlike other appointments, because this is a board-specific appointment rather than to committees, letters don't go out asking if they want to be reappointed. So Jacqueline hasn't had the opportunity to say whether or not she will do this for another three years or not. <laughs> but uh, I, for one board member, would like to give her that opportunity, but we cannot do that now until May 8th. Uh, is it okay with the board that we bring this back? Yes. Yeah. I, I had assumed it was a mistake, but I just double checked with other uh, towns on the Cape and no selectmen are on there. I was going to pretty quickly volunteer Larry since he'll free up. <laughs> he was gonna that was, you, that so. was my plan. We have a lot for Larry today. <laughs> uh, Jacqueline, you're welcome to say anything if you want. If not, we'll, uh, we'll have you on the agenda for May 8th. If you do want to say something, you do have to go to the mic, but you're not obligated to. Jackie Edston, 826 Route 28, South Harwich. Uh, yes, I'd like to see you on May 8th, and if you have time on the agenda at that time, maybe I can um, give you a brief uh, update of activities to date. And my apologies for not doing that before. Well, that'd be great. Okay, and count thank on you. That, count on that as well. Thank you. <coughs> All right, I need a motion on B. Mr. Chair, I move that we vote to approve a special permit for a one-day wine and malt license for Harwich Cranberry Festival and an event to be held at 204 Sisson Road on May 5th, 2023 from 6.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Motion on C. I'm afraid. <laughs> You're afraid? Well, I'm I'll move. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> I've just got a feeling. Um, Did you bring a checkbook tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I said I am not doing this for everybody that comes through the door. Yeah, I move that we, and, and we can say what we want to after this. I move that we approve a fee waiver request for the use of Dome Park Saturday, May 27th for the, Harwich, uh, for the Garden Club of Harwich annual plant sale in the amount of $175, $50 for the Board of Health, $75 for the Building Department sign permit, and $50 for Recreation Department. Second. Okay, moved and second. Any discussion? I would only say that, that, that not all, not that all of the organizations that come before us, um, I, I normally am against fee waivers. However, for the Garden Club and what they do for this town right. and how they maintain our gardens, yeah. and even in the wintertime, the black boxes get Christmas decorations, and um, it would be hard to vote not to give this fee, wa fee waiver. So. And uh, Don, I won't recommend that you pay. And, and I don't one. have enough money to keep doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so, any, fr any further discussion? Of yeah, welcome to Harwich. Okay. Just keep remembering okay, that. Okay, used to it. Uh, <laughs> any other discussion? No, I, I agree. Always. All, 
All in favor? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. I was going to volunteer Don for you. Was it pay in lieu of that, that effort, work in, in lieu of payment? He Actually, we were going to attach your last two paychecks, Larry. <laughs> that will not be used against me later either. Uh, <laughs> can I get a motion on D, please? Mr. Chair, I move that we vote to approve the 2023 renewal of expanded outdoor dining for the following two locations. Zach Incorporated doing business as Castaways at 986 Route 28 and Ember Pizza Incorporated doing business as Ember at 600 Route 28. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Old business. Discussion on next step. Land of low value sale. Joe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, everybody. Um, as you will recall, the uh, last uh, set of land of low value that the town was made aware of uh, by the Commonwealth back in the fall of 2021, uh, there was the requisite uh, auctions. The auctions occurred on October 26, 2022, and for anything that was not uh, sold by auction at that date, the town was then required to have a second auction. The second auction occurred on uh, November 16th, 2022, um, according to information from our treasurer collector. So the next step on any of the lands that are now left, because the town went through the requisite two um, auctions, anything left over, uh, the deeds were transferred to the custody of the town. So next step would be for me to um, send them out to all departments saying that these are the properties. If you do not have a use for them, let me know. If there is no use, it then goes to you folks to declare them surplus and then you can dispose of them in any way that you want to dispose of surplus property. Yeah. Is the board okay with Joe going through that process? <clears throat> oh, certainly. I, I was just, I'm sorry, I was thinking, and I usually I talk before I think, but could, how many properties do we have are, are you discussing? So my understanding on the original affidavit, there were 16 parcels. Um, I believe one of them was immediately taken off uh, because the owners came forward and paid the tax. So um, with the property cards that we have, um, I know of at least, um, I believe it's two um, properties that go back to the town, but um, I'd have to go through all the property cards to identify how many. Okay. Don? Um, well, just for public edification, uh, the normal question, any of these large enough to put a building on, like for the housing trust? Uh, so generally no, because they are lands of low value. Um, obviously, um, we'd have to look at the assessor's map to see what's available, what it's adjacent to. But generally, uh, we understand that the remaining lands have no value to the town. Okay, just wanted it out yep. there. Barry? So what happens, um, they, they were not picked up at the auction. Now, if somebody in the town, one of the department wants them, that's well and good. But after that, what do you do with it? If nobody wanted it on auction, so is we, there a belief we could still sell it? Theoretically, yes. Um, you know, there, um, as you would imagine, from any knowledge of auction versus sale, you know, auction you, you really just takes on a life of its own. Uh, disposition of sale, we could come up with a general value of it. Uh, it would be low, um, and that might entice people to come in. But same concept with the RFP. We could also have the criteria be highest and best offer on that land. Okay. So it's not that you're really competing like auction, but you'd still be competing with the best price. Thanks, Joe. And then if that doesn't work, it just becomes surplus town property. <coughs> Julie? No, I don't have any, any questions on them yet. The only <coughs> I would say is if there is a particular parcel that happens to neighbor another town parcel, maybe there's something we could do looking at that for the trust, you know, after we see where we end up. That's all. Thank you. Joe, um, so I think the consensus is go forward, offer them to the departments and bring it back to us with what the properties are so that we can make that decision. Sure. I know we have some interest in one or two of the lots that are left, um, but obviously they have to go through the sale specs to get those, but we do have somebody that's interested that was not interested at the auction prices. Uh, and then Joe to follow up I know we have to get through town meeting um, but I would be looking probably in June to have uh, a meeting with real estate and open space and I know they have some other properties that they have identified as land of low value um, 
and I, I believe that um, I got a smile out of the back of the room. Somebody came forward and paid their taxes as soon as they figured out what we were doing. And I think the more we do this, the more that will appear back on the tax rolls for the taxpayers. So June, I'd like to go through this exercise again. Uh, Certainly. If, can. I, if I, I will tell you, however, um, there's a difference between the process that we ended with where they were declared land of low value through the Commonwealth to other property that the town or a committee from the town may be aware of. So that's something that the uh, treasurer collector and I are already working on um, is evaluating that process. That can take a few uh, years um, as these did. My understanding is these were presented to the Commonwealth back in I think 2000 or 2019 and we didn't hear back until 21. Um, so we're finishing up the land of low value that the state has authorized at the same time, we'll be looking at other lands to do the same thing on. Thank you, Joe. <coughs> Excuse me. A discussion on 2023 annual town meeting warrant articles. Joe, do you have anything? Um, I do not, other than to let you know that um, we uh, expect the warrant books, which were published in the Chronicle, um, I believe, two and a half weeks ago. Uh, we have the warrant books on order from Cape Tech. We're expecting those uh, to arrive Tuesday or Wednesday. So they'll be generally available. They'll obviously have the bulk of them uh, available at town meeting with the annual town reports that we got. Uh, and um, I'm compiling my uh, big book of information, which is my binder uh, for each article. So if there's any questions that board members uh, want to uh, make sure I have an answer to, let me know. Um, it'll be a pretty comprehensive binder. Other than that, it's 378 days to town meeting. Thank you. Larry, anything on the warrant? Uh, not on the warrant. Uh, a, a question, though, Joe. Could you go double check with uh, Emily's not here tonight, but be sure we have the uh, cart recorder uh, screen? We do, actually. Uh, Jamie and Sarah have worked with um, the vendor and the administration, so we do have cart reporting set up. <coughs> Good. Great. Thank you. Don? Mary? All set. Julie? I do want one thing on Article 59 because um, we added my votes to all of the articles, which I'm fine with, except for the more I looked into Article 59. You know, I know the intention is to go to the state to ask for the monies, but, but from what I understand, the state will basically say, yeah, well, if you want to do that, <laughs> we'll give you the same amount of money and you can just use it for that. I don't want, so I don't mind this as a petition article. Obviously, we have to support it. I would support it being asked of the town. But I don't support the article personally so just <coughs> clarifying and Julie is that vote your vote listed on that article I don't think so I think thought we changed we added it we specifically left out the petition oh, did you leave it out yes. oh, okay correct. I thought we did all of them up to nope. okay oh good no, that's correct okay great we specifically said no petition articles perfect for thank you then I didn't realize that I and I didn't I mean to do that to single you out but I didn't want to get back into that whole debate. We had the petitioners in here. Yeah, no problem. Selling their articles, so. Because I didn't want to say something in, you know, in the antithesis of what I said in adding my name and then speak against it, if, if need be. Joe, I'm trying to find the article, but I would like you to give an explanation to the board and some in the public that are still confused about this. Page 118 over the uh, packet. How do you know that? Because I've got it. In How do you even know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's clairvoyant. <laughs> on this one, or is it? No, one? no, it's related to uh, Community Preservation Act. Um, oh, that was. And it's uh, created uh, Article 22, hmm. Preservation Act, Land Bank Debt Service, in the amount of 166,000. But it's also, from my understanding, um, in Article 4, in the operating budget. So, are we IPing one of the two? Yes, we're IPing Article 22 because the payment is built into the operating budget and we're trying to avoid what has happened in years past with the double entry. And so because we rely upon um, that funding source to pay off a debt, which comes under the debt service in the operating budget, it's already built into Article 4. Rather than change Article 4, I made the determination on Council's advice to indefinitely postpone Article 22 because if Article 4 passes with that element in, it's a moot point by 22. 
Okay, and who's going to make the recommendation to town meeting and give the explanation on Article 22 and the request indefinitely postponed? So I can certainly speak to that whole process, and I believe um, <coughs> through Council uh, Finance Committee was made aware of that, um, and I, I know that CPC was, but I'll be following up with them. Okay, thank you. Any questions on that, Don? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to point out that this is not a dollar-for-dollar dollar thing, and the outcomes are not the same. Uh, if we do it this way, then the CPC winds up with that money rolling over the next year in their buckets uh, because it's not going to be associated with any uh, payment. If we do it the other way, we get the money as a town to roll it uh, into uh, free cash in the following year. So there, there's a difference in outcome. It may wind up being the same amount of money in a different place, but it doesn't wind up accruing benefits to the same parties, depending on which one passes. Joe? I took that more as a comment than a question. Do you agree It is. It? I'm just saying it. That I, we we're doing so well tonight. <laughs> we're, um, still, we're, we're still doing well. Right. Respectfully, I would disagree. Meaning, in talking with council, that funding table has been repeated year over year. And so the opportunity exists for a double booking by the town. And in fact, it would be argued that it was a double booking. So if you can see the purpose under Article 22 to fund the payment of land bank debt service, which is part of the town's overall debt service, principal and interest, which is baked into our, uh, Appendix B in the operating budget, we're already identifying the funding source in Article 4. Which is? Voted which is CPC, CPC funds. Which is the CPC funds for the same purpose. Okay. It says that in the, uh, in the table. In the table? It says it in the table, and more specifically, the motion for Article 4, because that's where this came from. In crafting motions with council, that's where we discovered the potential double booking. And I'm fine with it. I just want to make sure that it was going to be winding up accruing to the same party at the end. Yeah. Correct. And that's yep. all I was trying to get out is that it's coming out of CPC funds, no matter what article it's in. Correct. Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, contracts. Motion on A, please. Mr. Chair, I vote. I move that we vote to approve the memorandum of understanding with Meals on Wheels as presented. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Go ahead, Don. Mr. Chair, I move that we vote to approve a unit price contract in the sum not to exceed one million dollars uh, with Robert P. Hour uh, Company. For drainage infrastructure and installation throughout the town. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Larry? Uh, only I think so, uh, it's a bit unusual to, uh, their estimated price is more than the 460 to 500,000, so we're doubling that. I mean, it gives us a lot of options going forward. It's just, it's, it's, it's a large gap. I don't remember seeing that before. So. So I think the recommendation to go that route is because of the snafu that we had um, uh, early on in fiscal year 23, where the dollar amount exceeded um, what was recommended, but not what was funded. So this gives us latitude, even though we fully expect the dollar amount to be the lesser. Yeah. It's, it's to avoid what we went through um, fiscal yeah, year 23. It's a very safe approach. It's just it's extremely safe, I guess. Uh, Mary, anything on this? No. Julie? No. Joe, do we ever get a list of drainage uh, by importance, or is this um, as projects come up, we have the money available to do them? Um, I think that's a question better for the DPW director. I know he and the roads manager have a list, uh, and they try to dovetail it with any other projects that are going on in the area. Okay. So if there's other infrastructure work. Thank what you. was that question again, Michael? We prepared a Is list. Is there a list? There, we, we, contract, we, paid a, we had a contract to pay a list for us a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago. Right. It was required by the state that we, that we submit that list. And, so and a lot of the list, that's the thing, there's no order of importance really. No, no order of importance at the time, right. because fine, but we did have a list. Yeah. All right. Thank you. That included um, culverts too, didn't it? No. Is that culverts or just? Did that include the, no, the state list. Uh, I don't know why you're yelling at me. <laughs> uh, no, I think the state list was storm drain. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. 
One more. One more. Yep. We we can do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Mr. Chair, I move that we vote to approve a unit price contract in the amount not to exceed $125,000 with markings incorporated for pavement marking throughout town. Second. Okay, moved and second. Any discussion? Don't. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> they, they're all worn out. Uh, Julie, all set? No, I'm okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye, five zero. Town Administrator's Report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, um, update you on a uh, contract that I executed on behalf of the town. Uh, you may recall this one. It is actually a grant uh, that was received um, through the uh, Cultural Affairs Department, Cara Mawini, um, and this is in support of uh, cultural aspects. It's $2,500, but uh, that was executed back on April 3rd. Uh, and then, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, I want to first put out a, a thanks to uh, my colleague Megan Eldridge, um, I know you folks were in capable hands. I'm going to do everything I can to beat her record of 715 tonight. <laughs> um, but I want to thank Megan and my team and certainly the board for your support. Uh, my girls and I had a lovely vacation, even though it was mostly staycation. Um, so thank you for that. And then uh, last but not least, I wanted to put this information out uh, this week um, ahead of uh, a town meeting where there's sur a sort of a fog that comes up around that. Uh, but I have had conversation with uh, Select Member Valentine, um, and it is my intention to name him as my designee to serve on the Board of Trustees of the Harwich Affordable Housing Trust Fund, uh, effective May 22nd. So after May 16th, Larry will be going into retirement, and so I look to pluck him right out of it and take my <laughs> place as my designee. Um, and again, that would be effective May 22nd. Um, Larry to say some nice embarrassing things about him, um, has um, uh, uh, attached, attacked the uh, project and the process from day one, and um, I, I, I think he will admit that he has a, um, uh, a, a keen interest in this, and I think it would be uh, best for all if he uh, stood in my stead um, on the trust. So again, that will be effective uh, May 22nd, 2023, and the expectation is that Larry would serve co terminously um, with my term as administrator. Thank you, Joe. That's fabulous. That's wonderful. I'm excited to help, but just to note, uh, I'm not volunteering for everything. <laughs> <laughs> there are requests for fee uh, exclusion. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be the fee exclusion board. <laughs> Larry uh, Proshi uh, would uh, be. Selectman's thrilled. report. Larry? Uh, nothing, just to look forward. Well, yeah, let me uh, question you, Michael. Let's, I know coming in, we had a. Uh, these, when do you want us there? 5.30? Oh, what do you want? 6.30? Is 6.30, is it half an hour enough half for the board? Half hour is enough, I think, this time. Well, there. Yep, yeah, that's good. Really? Yeah. Joe, do you see any reason why we need more than a half an hour prior to the town meeting? Um, I believe I heard that there is not going to be a joint meeting, or is there going to be a I joint meeting? I think we will leave the door open for it. But Very good. Um, so you said what time again? 6.30. Sure. 6.30 for the board and 7, 7 p.m., obviously, for town meeting. Yeah, if something comes up, you can call us. <laughs> Don? Nothing other to add other than I've been carbo-loading over the last couple of weeks in anticipation of next week's activities. All right. <laughs> uh, Mary. Um, <laughs> no, and on that note, I think I'll bring some cookies to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> just in case we get trapped. Yeah. Julie? I have nothing. I just want to say that I'm thrilled that Larry is yeah. taking that on, and I just think that that's also, it just makes me think of Larry Brophy as well and the original meetings we had before we even had a trust. So I just think it's such a great honor. Well, to do anything with Larry Brophy, I'll always, this afternoon I was commenting that Larry Brophy, the last meeting we were together here, I was, he was sitting next to me, and throughout the meeting he was, <laughs> making wisecracks. <laughs> Ch change is good. He said that one out loud. <laughs> yeah. uh, motion to adjourn? Second. Motion to second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 